Uh, righty. Looks like just us chickens here today, uh, for the most part. Meeting come to order, Ms. Manager. What, what kind of uh, agenda items do we have today? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On our work session this afternoon, we have a next gen update from Mr. Weissman. And then following that, we will go into executive session to discuss six items. Yeah. Eric, would you like to come to the podium? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you all for the time for us to give uh, an update on next gen. So we added those three letters uh, to the end of our brand at the beginning of the year, Greenville Entrepreneur Network, um, kind of a good evolution and a good representation of, of where we hope to go with the organization. Um, just a real quick reminder, Eric Weissman, executive director of next gen. I've been here for two and a half years now. Uh, so almost a Greenville native. But uh, just to remind you of uh, some of my background, came by way of Cincinnati. Prior to that, I worked for the Walt Disney Company. Over the past, really, the better part of a decade, uh, I've spent in this ecosystem building um, profession. Uh, I teach a class at Miami University on ecosystem building, entrepreneurial ecosystem building as a thing, as something you can be good at, as something that, uh, that you can study. Um, economic development 2.0 is evolving, is changing. Uh, we'll go in through a little bit of that in a little bit, but uh, talking about how we support startups uh, is important, is imperative as we grow as a region and as a country. So I want to first off say thank you. Thank you all for your support of our organization uh, throughout history. I think it's about 18 years, almost two decades uh, that Next has been in existence. Next Gen wouldn't be here without the city's support. Eric Weissman wouldn't be here without the city's support. So I just wanted to start off by saying thank you for that. Just as a reminder, kind of level setting here, and, and I'm open to questions. If you guys, if you want to, to stop me at any point, just, you know, kind of fire away. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, ready and, and willing to pivot on that. But why supporting startups matters. Um, you know, it really does create a diverse economy by having startups and small businesses be a thriving part of the ecosystem. All net new jobs are created by startups. When you think about the large companies that kind of have churned between them, you're kind of floating back and forth. If we start a startup today and, and hire two people tomorrow, those jobs didn't exist yesterday. They didn't exist today. So all net new jobs are created through startups. And it's a way for us to really encourage the community engagement from the people that are moving here. How do we get them engaged in the community by either being mentors or investors or starting their own thing at some point? So uh, just last week, um, you guys saw this, uh, hopefully you all saw this article in The Economist magazine. This was a, it came together very quickly. Uh, shout out to Beth Brotherton and Sam for helping uh, wrangle a, a great lineup of folks for, for this, uh, Simon, the reporter from The Economist uh, to see. The, the summary of that is that startups play an outsized role in creating employment in America. Um, before the pandemic, for every one big code job, four startup jobs were created, and now that is inverse. Big code jobs are, are, are shedding jobs. Big code companies are, are, are shedding jobs, and startups are still creating jobs. Uh, so the, the really thing that I like about this particular slide is that you know the headline says America is in the midst of an extraordinary startup boom, and that that byline is Greenville, South Carolina. That's something we should all be proud of. So kudos to us all on that. So from a standpoint of our uh, mission uh, and vision, our mission is to help the entrepreneurial community grow. And our vision, what we see is a robust ecosystem that provides entrepreneurs with the resources they need in a place they love to live. That's the imperative part of that statement is that you, you, you've chosen to be here, you've selected to be here, and now let's help you realize your entrepreneurial dreams right here without having to move or go someplace else. I want to give a quick shout out to my team uh, who's assembled here. So we've got Sydney, Molly, and Riley. Riley's not pictured. She's just in her second week. Um, but uh, this is a good, a good visualization. Susan couldn't be with here, but I guess you've left that seat open for Susan. That's where Susan would sit. Uh, it's pretty good. By the way, that's a good looking jacket you got. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I wore, I wore, a, different, <laughs> I wore a different jacket today. So show that I have a, a, a 
good wardrobe. Uh, anyway, that's a team just wanted you guys to see, you know, kind of what makes the magic happen. Um, so from what next does, I want you to leave today with, with um, hopefully a better understanding of what it is we do. How does that come to life and what is the impact of that? How do we measure our success and how do we make sure that, um, that we're aware of those improvements that are needed both within our organization and here in an ecosystem? So when you think of next, we do three things. We steward the broader entrepreneurial ecosystem, that which we've given the nickname to Startup Greenville. The second thing we do is provide direct support to high growth founders and their teams through a series of programs, services, and events. And then the third thing we do is measure the impact. Is any of this working? If so, what? Where do we need to fertilize? What do we need to prune? How do we pay attention to those areas of improvement and those overlaps, those gaps and those overlaps? And on the right hand side are the values that really guide our work, knowledge, connection and innovation. We believe that entrepreneurship fosters prosperity and can be a way that's accessible uh, for all to have uh, a bright future. So from that first mission of uh, stewarding the ecosystem, as I said, we've given this nickname to the, the to the. Uh, to this organism that, that we call Startup Greenville. NextGen acts as a convener, a guide, a problem solver. Um, and really from a, from a manifestation standpoint, this map, which you all should have uh, printed out in front of you, is really where this comes to life. So the intention of this is to really demonstrate there are 66 different nodes around this ecosystem. This is an impressive graphic. To show, so when when we, when Sam and Brian Davis and Jeanette Brewster and I had uh, breakfast with Simon from The Economist, this is the, the first thing that I wanted him to see to get a feel for all the stuff that's going on here. It's very rare for communities to have this type of visualization where everybody can see in, in one fell swoop what all is going on. So one of the things we do as a convening function is that we invite everyone on this map is invited once a month to our monthly meeting. Uh, we get about 22 people from 18 different organizations uh, pretty regularly uh, that come in and literally sit around the same table. Everybody's got four minutes at the beginning to start off and tell us what you did last month, where'd you get stuck, what went well, how can we help out with? And it really helps to foster that collaborative spirit so that people know that they're not competitive with each other, but they're working together. Often this is the first time or the only time in a month that these folks will be in the same room. So now they're beginning to use that as uh, a leverage tool for their own meetings to say, I'm gonna see you at that at the Startup Greenville meeting later this month. Um, having, uh, having a brand over the ecosystem does really two things. One, it makes us appear a lot larger than we are. And we've got a lot of, a lot of resources, so that's good. It's impressive to see this is not just some um, some sideline or side hustle for us to support entrepreneurs. We're very serious about it and intentional as a, as a community. So it makes us appear a lot larger than we are. And it also makes us appear a lot more organized than we are. And we are already very collaborative and very organized. So it kind of brings that to life. As a, as a, a, a point of reference on this slide, you know, you, you're able to see very quickly that there's a lot of parts and pieces and a lot of sections to this slide. Um, but one of the things that I want to uh, kind of call out at this at this juncture for the for this graphic standpoint is our intentional collaboration working with uh, both Village Launch and the Chambers Minority Business Accelerator Program that they are literally invited to the table. We're actively engaged with 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 working with their portfolios on what happens after their program. So you graduate from Village Launch, you graduate from the MBA program, and now how do you get embraced inside of the ecosystem? There can't be two ecosystems. There's one ecosystem that we support and grow and thrive. Yeah, I'm, I was going to say I like this particularly for people like me that, you know, when you when you try to explain something, for me it's just kind of up in the air. And if you try to explain this program, it's, you know, it's a lot of stuff, moving parts. And this just, I'm a visual person, so I've got a place I can just yeah. get my arms around a little more. And through the help of the city's communication team, this digital graphic has come to life online. 
Uh, so you're able to call out each one of these wedges and see that those support groups. Um, you know, this point is is just to show it from in a, in a pretty standpoint. So yes, sir. The point you're making about bringing them into the ecosystem. What, what exactly are you guys doing to bring the the businesses that are coming out of Village Launch and, and some of these other programs? into that ecosystem so that they can scale up as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're doing is intentionally having that relationship with Jeanette and with Sean and with Melissa and, the, and Dan, for that matter, of, of the people that are organizing that to literally invite them to the table to make sure that we're all aware, not just next gen, but also Greenville starts also the SBDC, the SBA community works is also at the table to make sure that we're aware of um, promising companies that are coming along or people that, man, it, it just didn't work out. Why did they, why did they drop out of, of, of the system? Um, we are intentionally having some of our events at Village Launch's new um, building. Uh, you know, I'm talking about where they have that. Uh, we had a, one of our founders forums there uh, a month or so ago. Um, and that was another intention to, to make sure that uh, those folks that are going through that program currently feel welcomed and feel like this is a program for them. It was about scaling, about about how to think uh, bigger did about your business. Did, did, did some of the businesses from Village Owners actually attend that event? For sure. Okay. Yeah, from the co current cohort and, and others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sydney on our team attended uh, probably two weeks ago now, um, but one of the last uh, classes of that cohort was here's how to get engaged in the ecosystem. Um, and that would not have been possible without that relationship with Jeanette and the rest of the team. Um, I attended the graduation ceremony, the, the 10 year uh, graduation ceremony. I think that was probably 2 weeks ago now, uh, but just an impressive message uh, by Carla Davis. Uh, you know, she just said uh, her message was for them all to think bigger. And to think about how could you raise money and, and to me, that was a refreshing. Um, uh, message for them to hear from somebody that that looked like them. That sounded like them and that is from another ecosystem from New York City to come here and say, no, you, you can do this. Um, so that's those are a few ways with Natasha and uh, the chambers MBA program. We're working towards what we would call a scale up program. So after you graduate from that, familiar with the Chambers Minority Business Accelerator Program, um, criteria on existing businesses have to have X amount of revenue, X amount of employees. Um, after you complete that year long, 10 month long program and you leave that cohort and you still want to scale, you still want to grow. There are a lot of folks, entrepreneurs that go through that program that don't want to scale. Yeah. They're a solopreneur, a massage therapist, wedding photographer, et cetera, and they're good. They just needed to get those guardrails on. But there are some that want to scale and grow. So we're working together on what a scale up program could look like, combining both of those, those, uh, those cohorts. This is not going to be 100%. And when I get to the next slide about the services and the programs that we provide, you'll see through that, 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 that it's not for everybody. But if you want to be on that track and you want to grow, and if it's a matter of us wanting to create that and foster that environment, then what are we doing as an ecosystem? To address the gaps that are at play here from access to capital, access to talent, access to office space, access to collaboration space, access to community space. Um, there, there's a, there's, there's a lot that can be done, but we need to be intentional with that. Cool. Eric, the, uh, on this chart, the star in the middle, is that a metric and what's the scale? That is a spider graph and it's one step too many <laughs> to be clear that that that's showing you how many resources, for instance, there's a lot of co-working. Yeah. So that's why the tip of that, that iceberg. Um, but yeah, that, that was, that's probably 1, 1 layer of cleverness we could remove from. Yeah. Good. Don't ever remove levels of cleverness. <laughs> Uh, so, from a the second thing that we do, uh, provide direct support to high growth founders and their teams. Um, when you look at the, the, the diagram on the right hand side, these are personas that we have developed to give names and, and, and uh, to the people and the, in the, uh, the founders that we serve. So, from left to right, searcher, starter, mover, grower. A searcher is someone who's what I call a wantrepreneur. They're, they're, um, 
they're, they're just getting started. They've got a back of a napkin idea. They're just at the very, very earliest stages. They need encouragement. They need a kick in the pants. They need that to, to see that there's other people that are like them and, and get out in the field. Those aren't the programs that, that we provide. There's other places in the ecosystem that they could go. Greenville Starts is a great one. The platform at Greer has a two day boot camp. Village Launch is another place to, to, to get started. But imagine that there's a filter between searcher and starter, and that filter is on that green side. So these are the questions that we ask. What's the propensity to scale? Do you want to grow this business? Would you hire another person? Would you open up another, another storefront? Do you want to scale? Does it generate wealth? And not just for the owners, right? But does it, what, would anyone else put their money into this? Will you, is it investable? Does it have a regional impact? NextGen is not a nationwide organization. We really are focused on, and I'll go, I have a map uh, later on in the, in the presentation about where our, our emphasis lies, and that is the, the, the beacon is shining from the city of Greenville, Greenville County, the Greenville MSA, and then it gets a little blurry with the, the upstate. We're very, very, very focused on the Greenville Entrepreneur Network. And then finally, does it create jobs? As an economic development agent, you need to be concerned about that. Um, but we're never going to compete with the, the, the amount of jobs of a call center or a manufacturing plant. But, but that has to be part of that, that um, in, in that equation. But, the, but the, one, of the, one of the ideas, though, is that as these companies grow, you could end up with a, with a company with 1,000 employees. Or, yeah. And we have those success stories here on Greenville. Correct. Yep, that's the plan. So, so completing that funnel, uh, searcher, starter, mover, grower, those that you're talking about, council member to work in, are the growers, Kayatech, Remedy, Chartspan, these companies that have hired a lot of people, that have raised a lot of money, that are taking up real estate and, and, and being a, a, uh, a job creator. Um, the, the movers persona we have highlighted, that's our one metric that matters. That's a startup term, but one metric that matters. If you could pick one metric that matters, what would that be? And so we want to focus on movers because movers will eventually become growers. That's our job is to push them along. And if we're not growing the growers, then that has a, a that, that's telling us something from upper upper part of the funnel is that we're not, we're not, we're not pushing enough people down. So that's that persona that we look at. And I have an impact page. We'll, we'll see a little bit later of how that's shaping up. But from how do we deliver? What do we do? So the programs and services, this is just a, a, a real quick list of our accelerator program. Uh, we want run one cohort a year. Uh, we just closed that out um, a couple of weeks ago. We're kicking it off in a week. Yeah. June 3rd, Molly said June 3rd, so that's when it is. Um, no, but that'll be uh, five companies that are gonna go through a 12 week program. Uh, and that culminates in a demo day or a graduation day on September 18th, uh, part of Next Venture Summit. But these are high growth companies uh, that are already located here uh, in Greenville and uh, push them through an intense curriculum, uh, patching them in with mentors and, and, and help along that way. Uh, then we do a series of workshops. Um, we have a, a mentor program, uh, an office hours, um, but I, I can go into this or just keep moving forward. Did you come grow your curriculum? Or is it, a, is it a model that many similar organizations have used for such a purpose? It is homegrown, but Frankenstein together through various best practices. Uh, Molly actually went through the Boston University Accelerator Program. So kind of best practices from that. Uh, we did not buy an off the shelf curriculum, which is you can do that. There's, there's plenty of organizations that um, that offer that as a license fee. Um, but we feel from, and this may be a little bit antiquated from my definition of, of what an accelerator does, but it really uses the ingredients of the community to help push the community forward. Um, there are uh, no shortage of organizations that will third party, they will bring in an accelerator under the guise of helping out economic development, but those companies then leave. The companies that that they've recruited to come in here, um, and that's not that's not a long term um, successful formula for us. So um, we thought about that about buying one of those curriculums or partnering with an organization like that, but um, 
we feel that that making that our own is the way to go. And then from an event standpoint, uh, this is what we, you know, we're bringing the dinner, dinner bell, we're, we're banging the trash can, getting people to come out. Um, we have two signature events. Uh, uh, our biggest one is Next Venture Summit, uh, which I'll talk about on the next slide. And then the, the, the bus stop events, what I call bus stop events that happen with regularity. You missed the last one, just stand here, another 10 minutes, a bus will come right by. Uh, those are our founders forum, happen on a monthly basis. And then our startup drinks or suds, uh, that we do that we do that twice a year, and that's a pure networking event. Uh, our last one was uh, just a few weeks ago up at uh, Otherlands uh, Brewery in, in North Maine. That was a lot of fun. So next venture summit. Um, uh, this is nine years running now. Um, this will be our ninth year, uh, and really the thing that the wrinkle that we added this past year was a match day, a, a curated pairing of founders and funders. So we invited 30 investors from across the country to meet with 45 startups from around the region. Each had 18 minutes, just like speed dating. It was 18 minutes. We literally rang a bell, everybody changed tables. Every startup got to meet with four investors. Every investor got to meet with eight startups. So you do the math there and it's 186 pairings in just one afternoon. Um, I have it on, 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 relatively confident authority. This has never done, been done before in Greenville. And uh, Bob Quinn, the executive director of the South Carolina Research Authority told me it had never been done in South Carolina. So this is another one of those instances where Greenville's in the lead um, as far as going to support its high growth entrepreneurs. And really, um, you know, the, the premise of this is to get exposure to our startups so that they know the questions they're asking. And we're following up with them constantly. Do you feel prepared for the questions that you're getting? What type of questions are they getting? Are they responding back to you? How can we help? And then we're asking similar questions to the investors. Why didn't my kid make the start make the soccer team? You know, we want to, we want to know what we need to work on. Not that you need to have him as your starting fullback or your starting keeper, but but what we need to work on. And that's that's the in, information that we're getting. And is this an opportunity for investors to actually invest in the entrepreneurs themselves? Correct. Okay. Yep. Short time. And and even though I, to set the expectation that, uh, that no checks would be written at this, no money is, these are contacts. These are, these are, these are dots, not, not, not lines, but these are, are dots. Um, there was an investment on that, on that afternoon. So that was a good thing. Uh, moving on from our third thing. So steward the broader entrepreneurial ecosystem, provide direct support to high growth founders and their teams. And the third thing is we measure the impact. Is any of this working? If so, what? We want to be the Fitbit of the ecosystem, the, the Strava platform, if you will, that, that measures a lot of your steps and your heart rate. And your, but, but, but we need to know if any of this is working. So these are our um, stats here. On the left hand side is, you know, a year ago, the, the blue is where we are currently. We're actually a little bit north of that currently. Um, got about 7,000 people in our overall database, about 500 of them we've labeled as entrepreneurs or they've self selected and we communicate to both of those in two different ways. Then of those 500, we've got 127 that we consider clients. These are the ones that show up to our stuff. These are the ones that are getting advice from us that, that we're working with on a much more regular basis. And of those 127, we pull those on an annual basis. And this is how that, that breaks down. Around $98 million in annual revenue. Last year, $41 million raised in venture capital, uh, which in a down year for most venture capital, this was great. This is just for Greenville companies. How that breaks out, you can read about the industry ver verticals, about our minority stats, and then from a headcount and, and a wage standpoint, uh, on the far right hand side. And how many funders is that 41 million? That's a good question. I don't, I don't have to figure that out because we just asked how much did you raise? Not like who syndicated with you. Um, but I would say, does it, does it tend to be larger, lar larger firms that are funding these? Yeah. I mean, like 6 AM city raised $12 million. Um, you know, that was probably led by one, yeah. but there was several other that were okay. in that funding round. So I would say that, you know, we're talking about a dozen. Yeah. Okay. 
How do we know that how many of those are actually in operating in the city? Are all of them operating in the city? It's as if you have seen this presentation before. <laughs> Let you go. So how that breaks out from a zip code standpoint, um, you know, this is just looking at Greenville County. You can see a concentration in city specific zip codes and we're getting better at this. Um, a lot of people use a mailing address, not their home address. A lot of the solopreneurs, solopreneurs kind of go back and forth between that. Um, but, uh, at the, um, I can share that with you in this public, um, but, but I can share with you the private data that we have. And I'm very proud of that, that, um, that spreadsheet that we have and the hard work of the team, um, that really, uh, smiled and dialed their way through, um, getting people to respond and to get, get it to this point. Well, let me ask you this. At what point they have to be making revenue to have a business license. Mm -hmm. So, do we do we have a way to capture the business license revenue tied to? I guess what I'm getting at is how much is Next Gen sending into our business license yeah. revenue? Where's Patricia? There she is, taking debts copiously. You know, we ought to be able to tie that, um, but it's only if they're doing business in the city. That yeah, to, with our yeah. tech ID number or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, I think Mr. Rivers provided the information to the city council and provided the information. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's relevant to us. You know, the whole it was it was providing business startups, or supporting the entrepreneurial system, uh, with the hopes that they stay here and that Greenville is their place of business. So, to me, the only way, the only metric I can tie to that is business license revenue. Mm -hmm. Not and that that's the, yeah. And if they're doing business within the city, even if they're a non resident, they should be not a business. Right. But I mean, that'd be, that'd be something I would but, be interested and in. And that is one of the things that caught the wind, caught the eye of the economist reporter. Mm -hmm. And why he focused on Greenville was new business creation. And a lot of those filings, you know, Greenville is Greenville County is is outsized for its peers as well as the rest of the state. So I think that, yes, a business license um, requires some form of revenue, but a business formation is another good uh, another good sign. So I'll, I'll follow up with you. Thank you. And, and also, are there industries that they were better at than others. I mean, bioscience or life yeah. sciences or stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so the, of the ones that oh, these I'm are the sorry. ones that I'm we sorry have. That. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, you know, technology and software, and I think that that is the number one, just because of the heritage of of next gen. Uh, it started off as very tech specific, as very tech focused, and now we're widening the aperture on: Do you want to scale? Do you want to grow? Um, healthcare, life sciences. I think it's always going to be in the top three. Of any ecosystem you look at, um, and we're right there, you know, as a as number two. Just ending up, um, talk about a, a couple of our hero stories. Uh, some of the founders kind of make this um, uh, come to life. Camber Parker, hopefully, many of you have have come across her. Her Yo Pro No or or Young Professional. Um, uh, the service oriented group that helps companies as they're hiring and want to retain their young professionals. Um, we have her labeled as a starter. She's expanded her team, um, her executive team this year for sure. And she's been a part of our VMS, our mentor program. She's gone through workshops and CEO lunches. And then John Scott of Scopestack, uh, he rose $5 million last year, part of that through Cultivation Capital, uh, Cliff Holcamp, uh, who moved his practice here from St. Louis. Excuse me, but John is expanding his team from five people to 15 people just last year. So that's just a dramatic growth. Um, and he's choosing to do that, that right here in Greenville. So just wrapping up, um, you know, we need to stay ahead of the curve. The competition for talent is fierce, uh, especially here in the Southeast. 
Those companies in Cora and Supermoon that were featured in the Economist article, they, they need to grow. They need to be successful here, or, or we need to make sure that they have, they can find those accesses to capital, access to, to talent here, or they're at risk. And we need to just pay, pay attention to that. Uh, traditional economic development is evolving. Um, I'm very encouraged um, by the creation of the EDC, uh, GEC, EDC, or just EDC. Um, and the hiring of Sam Honduras, um, I think that's a, a great move. And, uh, you know, I, I do respect that Sam is, is drinking from the fire hose. He's about, you know, 3 inches away from it right now. But as that abates, um, uh, we're looking forward to continuing our partnership and, and he's a regular, uh, has already been to both start of Greenville meetings, monthly meetings. So, um, but just looking forward to that and, and, and our, our, uh, um, uh, our angle in this relationship is we speak startup. So when you're talking about retail, you're talking about infill, you're talking about that. When you do get a call from a fintech company that's in Salt Lake City that's looking for an East Coast headquarters and want to talk to other Series B companies that are like, that's where we come in to be able to patch you into that network to show you that there's a graphic to show you this is not just a, a, a hobby for us here in Greenville. And then uh, again, as a, as a way of thanking you guys for 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 uh, remaining engaged, um, it is rare for a city council um, uh, to be as engaged and aware of the startup ecosystem as this one is. So thank you for being visible, for being supportive, not just of next gen, but of all of the the entrepreneurial efforts of um, you know recraft, for instance, is another one that. <clears throat> That type of spirit of creativity and entrepreneurship is important. So we got three events just to talk to you about a founders forum. Um, that's our monthly event. The next one is uh, end of June um, out at CUI car. Right. Um, then start up Greenville night at the drive. Um, the uh, Craig and Jeff uh, kind of give us that uh, that give all of us that bully pulpit that front porch of the ecosystem to kind of show off and say. Here's what we're proud of. That's uh, September 5th. The next venture summit is September 17th and 18th. And I just want to leave you with, I've said a lot of jargon. I've said a lot of buzzwords. You don't need to know all that. All you just need to know is how to spell my email address and make sure that, that you're aware that, that we have an ecosystem and it's here to support those high growth entrepreneurs. That's great. I'm glad you gave that last point because I'll tell you where I am lost in is the branding. Yeah. And I, I feel a little guilty when I come across people that, that are in the entrepreneurial and I, I don't, I can't point them to a website, just give them your contact information. And that doesn't necessarily seem sophisticated enough. I mean, if there was a, a brand, a name, mm -hmm. a something, would we, would we refer them to next gen Greenville startup Greenville? Cause for a while it was startup Greenville. That's what I would start up green. Yep. Okay. That is the landing pad. Okay. And then that's the, 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 the site that we're monitoring to make sure okay. that we have somebody that is, um, keeping that information current. And that was the, the, the relationship that, uh, Beth and the communications team and, and, uh, have been, uh, uh um, just, just, you might tell terrific. the story you told me about, uh, the startup green Bowl line and how the economist. Yes, yeah. through that, which is very good. Good for us to know. Yeah. So, so the, the. When we talked to Simon about, so how did you find, how did you find us? <laughs> and, um, it was a, it was his own thesis of, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Beth and, and Sam, but. He was doing a study on startups that have been built since the pandemic. Not because of the pandemic, but since the pandemic. And he had a friend, colleague that is a data wonk uh, from the University of Maryland, and he cited in that in that article. And this guy showed him some reports, and here were these reports that the Southeast, particularly North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, were outperforming the rest of the country. So this guy starts digging in and does a search for startups in Greenville, Greenville startups, Greenville, South Carolina startups, and he came across this site. And that site has um, the city contact information. Uh, somehow we caught wind of Sydney, sent Sydney and Beth um, uh, emails. 
And then it was a Tuesday afternoon and or Tuesday during the day. And Beth said, do you have time tomorrow uh, to go to, to breakfast with this reporter from The Economist? Sydney sitting across the table says, I got an email from the reporter at The Economist. And, you know, we triangulated very quickly. Um, but, you know, that was that was testament to um, not letting that one go uh, to be on the radar of of a publication like The Economist with a global reach, um, and then through the ten tenacity of, of Sam and Beth to convince them to, you gotta come here. Yeah. We gotta get your feet on our street and see that and write that article. And then it, went, it was in print within a week. It was digitally that weekend, and then in print the following week. It was fantastic and really quick turnaround. Yeah, I think they were just mailed. I'm, I'm a subscriber and I think I got my hard copy, Sonny, Texted it to me. Got the hard copy today. Yeah, I was going to ask. I uh, I hadn't read the article, but how exciting about it! So, I mean, what do, what do you is are, is there anything that you specifically anticipate coming? I mean, obviously broadly and generally. I mean, what great publicity for us! And but I mean, what do you expect to come once this thing starts hitting mailboxes and books book stands? So, in keeping with like we were all also on Stanford's radar at the beginning of this year. The more of these data points that you get, so now there's a white paper out there about the Greenville startup scene by the Hoover Institution of Stanford. Now we've got an economist article. So when when these when these people with influence, specifically PR influence, uh, are doing their research on these types of of um, growing communities or communities that are focused on entrepreneurial growth, we're going to be in the top five where where it, usually Raleigh or Austin or you know some of these more traditional hubs. But now what's the, the, the proof is that the those that, that spotlight is shifting. And really there is no spotlight anymore. You don't have to be in Boston to have a good life sciences company. You don't have to be in the valley to raise money. It's really being democratized throughout the throughout the in, entire country. So what I would hope to come from this is that we would be on on more of those radars of the people that are doing that data and doing that research and hopefully part of the subject of of some of that. So we can look into new business creation and tax filings, new business filings, and make sure that that trickles down um, to hiring and to um, utilization rates of facilities and, and things like that. Um, I'd rather be on this side of the pendulum for sure. Do we have anything else? Well, we have real quick, I know we have a direct connection with the Hill Institute, but do we have a direct connection with with Clemson yeah. and Carolina students that are coming up that maybe you know budding entrepreneurs? Just real quick, do we have a contact that would, they know that you exist? I think the short answer is no, but it's not. It's not. Um, we do have some connections, uh, specifically with the MBA E program that's here, um, and with ICAR, okay. but with Clemson SC and some of the undergrad things that are going on there, um, it's not as direct. Okay. But we're working on it. We should be. I mean, we and, have and some we're working on it too. That came right out of Clemson. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mayor, we need a move into executive session. Okay, we have a motion. So moved. Second. Great. Lee. Yes, sir. Thank you. Y'all have six items to discuss this afternoon. Five are permitted under 30-470A2. Prospective contracts each for acquisition of property in the vicinity of Church Street, Pleasant Valley, Augusta Street, and then update on prospective contract regarding City Hall. Legal advice on public comment at public meetings, and then under subsection A5, economic development incentives for property on Patewood Drive. 